Hi, how are you? I love it. I'm good. Well, we're good. <laughs> we're good. Everything's crazy. Everything's so crazy right now. Oh, yeah. I just, 2020 is like on fire. That's all I've been saying. <laughs> like, legitimately on fire. It looked like yesterday, Mad Max, I think, was just going to come out on his crazy, like, car with all those, like, renegades. That's just how I felt with the way the weather looked. It was bizarre. Oh. Uh, well, we went, so this is actually the first Labor Day weekend I've had off in, I don't know, 20 something years. And so we actually planned a little vacation and we're like, oh, let's go to San Diego. We'll get away from the smoke, get away from the heat. We found this cool little spot um, about 40 minutes up the mountain a little bit outside of San Diego. And of course, Saturday we get there and it's the all time hottest temperature they've ever had in the town of Alpine. It was 113 degrees. And then about three o'clock, <laughs> seriously, about three o'clock or 2.30 on Saturday, we leave to go drive down to the beach. And there's a pretty good sized fire that's literally across the freeway, which is now known as the Valley Fire, which has burned 15,000 acres. And like we spent the rest of the weekend on an evacuation warning. Not uh, fortunately, the winds were blowing the opposite way, but literally it was it was four to five miles from our hotel. Um, like at night driving back on the freeway, you could just see the whole mountainside burning and it's crazy. And I'm like, how 2020, yeah. how yeah, that's 2020 just the answer for everything. 2020. <laughs> right. Well, I'm glad you guys are safe and yeah, that's nuts. So great vacation. Hopefully, hopefully at least some of it was fun. It was all right. Yeah, yeah. it was all right. Oh it's never, it's never truly a vacation these oh. days. Um, you know, just with everything going on in, in our industry, um, I, I joke, I mean, I, I've had since March, well, since March 3rd, I've had four weddings, um, four yeah. events. And somehow I'm busier right now than I normally am when I have, you know, 20 something weddings in the month, because just the, the sheer amount of emails and calls and concerned couples and venues asking questions and everything back and forth has just literally created like a full-time office yeah, job. Yeah, it's me. funny that you say that. I had Brian Ferris on last week and he said the same exact mm -hmm. thing. He was like, I am busier now with less client, like less booked events, but like the projects are taking up just so much time. Yeah, I, I, have, uh, I have one particular bride that, um, that we'd been dealing with quite a bit on rescheduled days and, um, and I think the other day I looked and it was like 72 emails that we've had, which for a typical couple working on their event and doing all the planning sessions, a lot of which we do in person, um, we would typically have, I don't know, maybe 20 emails, right. you know, through an entire process all the way through. So yeah, it's It is crazy. crazy. <laughs> um, I just, I, I started this because I really want to just showcase small business right now. Um, I think it's big on my awesome. heart and I think it's important to support each other during times like this. And I figured if you have the resource and the platform, um, just someone that's a, like me, I'm a coordinator. So I just network with a lot of people. I subcontract a lot of people and it's different this year, obviously, because of things going on, but we move forward and we're trucking along and and life is happening. And I really want to show that part of it, that life is happening. Life's not stopping. We're going to go forward. And it just looks totally. a little different. And I think that's my biggest thing with this is I wanted to bring people on to show that it can feel scary because of how, how things are portrayed and like things are bad, but also things are really good. And I want to mm -hmm. show that. And so I want you to like basically have the floor with this. Um, kind of introduce yourself um because there's a lot of people i know that i network with that either are in the process of getting married planning their wedding but just kind of introduce yourself the name of your business and like what it is that like is your bread and butter that you specialize in for people that don't know you awesome no i appreciate the opportunity um so music and more entertainment is the name of my company um we've been doing or i've been doing this now uh and started my company well, actually, I didn't start my company. I've been doing this now for 26 years. Um, and I started uh, my company um, about 10 years ago. Um, actually, I guess a little bit longer than that now. Um, and the whole idea and, and thing when I started my company was 
I wanted to be different and I wanted to try to do things a little bit different in the DJ um, business and the, the DJ aspect. And, you know, unfortunately, um, our our profession doesn't necessarily have the best name at times um, because people look at DJs as just anybody that can do something on the side, play some music, you know, mix on a turntable and, and play music and get people on a dance floor. And we really, um, what we try to do with our company is we try to really take it to the next level. We want to be, um, you know, a super fun, super personable um, DJ and, and personality at your event. But we also want to be the person behind the scenes that's putting out fires, that's working with our coordinators, organizing things with our photographer and our coordinator, making sure there's a good flow and a good feel to the event. And, you know, probably as much as anything, we tell our couples, um, we want to build and create unique weddings and unique events that are catered and tailored towards the couple we're working with or the company that we're working with for their, you know, holiday party or for their, um, I mean, we do, we do a big company in towns, um, events every year where we literally play music for four hours at the last day of their conference. And every year there's a little bit different theme and a little bit different feel. And, you know, a lot of needs from a um, audiovisual standpoint, but this company knows they can trust us for that. So, um, you know, we really just try to put a customized touch on things. Um, like a lot of companies in, in our business and in our industry, um, you know, I started out as a, as a DJ and MC and announcer. Um, and then we've kind of just morphed a little bit away from that as well. And, you know, we've added photo booth rentals um, to our, to our, uh, repertoire, if you will. Um, and we do a lot of custom lighting. Uh, now we're doing more even we just in the last uh, six months, we brought on um, a really cool effect that we do now for our weddings called um, a dry spark machine or a sparkulator. So if you've ever seen the videos where there's sparks shooting up in the air behind a first dance or a bridal party introduction, we do that now as well. Um, so we're, you know, we're kind of, we're always just looking for the next new thing and what couples are looking for and what people are wowed by and um, ways to make events, parties, celebrations, weddings, um, school dances, whatever it may be, really fun, really cool and really unique. So um, it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun getting to where we are and doing, you know, what we've been doing, but this year is definitely a test for us. I mean, we're typically... You know, I, I think this time of year we'd be on like event 120 or something for the year. And I think we're on event like 20 for the year, maybe not even that. Wow. So, um, but, you know, like everybody else, you know, we're dealing with it. We're working with our couples, um, you know, the customer service side of things and, and being a great business is as important to me as making money. Mm -hmm. um, so we've really been, been pretty lenient when working with our couples and, you know, trying to reschedule dates and not charge cancellation fees and, and work with them, you know, as much we can and, and be flexible. And so far we've been, we've been pretty lucky and pretty happy that we've been able Good to do for that. You. Just, yeah. Like figuring yeah. out uncharted waters and like, just kind of catering to it. That's what you have to do. Like you just have to like figure out like yeah. the clients having thorough consultation and really communicating so that when you said that 70 plus email you had, like that makes sense. I hear that number and I go, yeah, that's about right. Like it's about a, yeah. like a book, a small book of conversation of just what do we do? How do we navigate this? And that's why I think it's really important. And I know firsthand because of I've been doing my coordination for probably five years now. And I've been in the special events field for close to 12 and i would say that the biggest thing is having your dj who's your M MC for the night is really important to have good communication with him along like some of your other vendors if you don't have a coordinator like having at least a timeline of things and that has changed so much this year because of not so much people wanting it small but they have to have it small so the biggest thing right. is venues just canceling on people and then going I don't know what to do. Like literally, do we just cancel it? What do we do? Um, so yeah, I just, it's, it's been nuts, but um, I personally wanted to know like, what's, um, what's the feature that you would say is the coolest part about your company? I know you said you have that, the fire or the sparks. Do you like to do special yeah. type of monogramming? Yeah. So we do, we do the monogramming. We do, 
um, you know, all kinds of different lighting. We do dance floor lighting. We do room up lighting. Um, we actually, I, I don't know now, five years ago, six years ago, um, invested in a, in a different type lighting system than, well, pretty much anybody in this area has. Um, I think there's one other DJ um, in Northern California that has them, and I think like two in the Bay Area. But, um, you know, instead of having like what we kind of tell people, instead of having like a spotlight up light in a room, ours is more of a floodlight. So it gives it a really cool, even lighting uh, look in there. And, and quite frankly, those, um, those lights are just, they're wows. They're big time wows for people when they walk in the room. Um, and I love doing that, but you know, honestly, like that stuff's really cool. I love doing lighting. And I used to, um, I used to think lighting was cool. I almost think it's a necessity now um, just because of what it does to the overall mood and feel of the room. And we tell our couples this, like, I don't, I hate to be, I'm, I'm like, I, I go to buy a car or a truck and I don't want to be, I don't want a salesperson, you know, doing pressure sales on me. So I have to be really careful when I'm, you know, selling to our couples. Cause I don't want to come off that way. It's just not my personality and it's not my style. Um, however, I also want people to understand what's important and, you know, what will make a huge effect. And um, so, yeah, the lighting's been a huge part. That's why we added those sparculators this year, um, you know, and that's, that's really cool stuff. But when it all really comes down to it, what I think, you know, for me personally and, and my company and, and when I, by the way, you hear me say we and us, um, in addition to me, I have three other DJs that work with my company. Um, they're not full-time. Um, Sean Kennedy is my closest to full time and he's, you know, pretty much, he's pretty much my, my business partner, main guy, um, and, and an incredible DJ and MC and, and does phenomenal events. He actually had a wedding on Labor Day weekend this year. Um, yeah, so that was really cool for him. Um, but, uh, you know, what, what I think our approach to how we plan weddings and how we work with couples, I think is our single biggest, um, you know, positive thing we bring to our couples in our industry. And it's just that, you know, we really do treat every event as a blank slate. We want to make weddings unique to the couples we're working with. Um, we don't want to have the same playlist going on. We don't want to play the exact same songs. Um, you know, there's a, there's a bartender at a, at a really popular, great wedding venue, um, you know, the other side of Sacramento. And she, she jokes with me that, um, there's two DJs or three DJs that come in there. And she said, I can literally tell you what they're going to say, how they're going to say it and what songs they're going to play almost in the same order. And um, that's great. If you're, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's great if you just, you do it and you rock it well. Um, and I've definitely got, I've definitely got caught in, in my life. I mean, I've done like 2,300 weddings now in my life. Um, I've definitely caught myself um, getting caught up in like, Hey, I played, you know, this song, that song and whatever, back to back to back at some point. Um, so that's great if you do that. But what we really want to do is we really want to make it custom to our couples. I've played weddings before where I literally can't stand the music I'm playing. It's music that I don't <laughs> like that. I just, it just doesn't do anything for me. Um, but I have to put it on there with a smile and I'm mixing and I'm, you know, and I'm laughing and I'm giving fist bumps to people and I'm high fiving and, you know, whatever I'm acting like I love it because that's what we do. And that's, and ultimately we want our guests to, you know, I tell people, I want to have a kick-ass dance floor. I want to have guests loving what they, what they were a part of and the celebration they got to be a part of. Um, but equally as important, I don't want them to be like, Hey, that DJ wouldn't shut up. That DJ was annoying me. That DJ was funny guy on the mic. You know, we really believe in our, and our couples have, have told us that they really appreciate that we're able to be personable and fun without going over the top. And so that's, that side of things is probably more important to me than the bells and the whistles and all the things that we yeah. can add on. It's just being who we are as personalities and, and making sure every one of our events is a great experience for well, our I clients. I can tell you, I, 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 I saw your reviews. You're a five-star company. So that's amazing. And everyone should know that. So you're very Thank professional you. and that's, <laughs> that, that is reflective of your professionalism, your, t your taste in your organization and just all, all of it. So I really, I'm Thank you. <laughs> just thinking like we need to throw a party called coming out of COVID. 
and just make <laughs> it where you want to be here. It's this time, this day in January or whenever we're able to come out of our houses and like just have the best time because I think everyone could use that. So that's why I'm like, you know, if you're going to have a wedding, let's let's have the wedding. Okay. Yeah. You can't have your 150 guest list, but you can have 50. Let's figure it out. Let's move the venue. Let's, I, there's places you really got to get resourceful. And that's where like having a really organized person come in to like help guide you. And it's not just because we're used to it. No, we're, we're used to it and we're networking with other people. So you're going to get it from the horse's mouth. Yeah. Like if you can't have your event here, you're going to know. It's not like it's an if maybe eh, it's no, you can't have it here. We're going to have to go somewhere else. And dates are changing so it's really about being flexible and i would well and you gotta you gotta keep in mind the respect of everything too when we when we started back doing weddings i told our couples i said so here's the deal number one first and foremost let's address with your crowd the elephant in the room or the elephant outside because <laughs> <Right. laughs> we're, we're all having outside weddings only right um but uh you know, and what I what I kind of explain to people is, and I wrote up a short little thing, which was basically a, um, a just, you know, welcome, greeting. Usually we did it before the bride and groom came in, um, right before the bridal party introduction. And we just told folks, you know, be respectful of everyone. Um, if there was, you know, which in most of the ones we've done, there's been strict rules about masks through the entire event. You know, and we just told people, please remember to have your mask on unless you're sitting at your table. Um, be respectful of people when you're in line and when you're walking around and understand that although you may feel incredibly comfortable, there might be someone right across from you in a walkway that doesn't. Um, so, you know, we definitely did that announcement. A um, couple other things that we did that I think are really important. We have disposable mic covers. So for our toast now, um, in between every every toast, we're switching mics, wiping them down, um, ster you know, sterilizing, cleaning them, switching the mic cover on the top, um, which has been, you know, I don't know. I don't want to get into the, the politics of COVID-19. I'm not so sure that it's as crazy deadly and contagious as, you know, we're led to believe personally. But that doesn't mean that, again, the people I'm working with are going to feel that way. So we want to make sure we're being respectful of that. Um, I'm wearing a mask when I've done weddings. I'm wearing a mask the entire time, which I hate. Um, but I do it because it's just what we got to do. Um, and then uh, the other cool thing that we're doing um, is we've got a really cool app now that uh, we put out a QR code at every table. And it's actually a request app. So instead of people coming up and having to stand across from me and lean over and go, hey, DJ, DJ, <laughs> you know, we can actually, uh, they can just click on it. They can send me a request right from their phone. It literally sends it to me as a text message. Um, more than anything, I was telling someone this the other day, um, more than anything, what that's done is it's really opened up a fun level of, of rapport and confidence amongst the guests and myself. Um, and uh, we've had fun with that. We've even done a photo booth um, since all this has happened. And basically what we did there is we had a photo booth operator that was running the photo booth. No one was allowed to touch the booth, the pictures, the printer, you know, the, the camera, the, the ring light, um, except for our employee. Um, and then any of the props that they used um, were basically disposable props. So once they used, they were gone, they were done. And we let everybody know that ahead of time at the beginning of the night, they could use, um, you know, that prop for their family photo whenever they do that. And then once they were done with it, it basically went in a bag and was done for the right. night. So, so like you said, there's, there's weddings going on and you got to be creative. And, um, you know, most of them have been under that 50 range. I'm not going to lie. I have done weddings that right. are bigger than that. Um, but you know, there, there's, they were in different places, um, you know, and sometimes on maybe on private property, maybe <laughs> not. I don't know. Um, you know, we're just exactly we're trying to make our couples happy and work with them as much we can yeah, be flexible. That's amazing. And that's all that's all you can do. And that is going to that's going to be reflective of who keeps coming back. And it's that it's just ensuring that like we we are serious and we care and that's really important and that's like what i want people to know mm -hmm. is like again it's not it's not gonna be scary forever and it's okay and that we're gonna all navigate these waters together and do certain protocol but i will say that not everyone is doing that and I, there's for maybe various reasons but like 
you know, having the disposable mic covers. Someone might think that's a waste. Others think, oh my God, that's why I'm hiring you because it's just totally. a compromise that we have to make. No one can sit here and tell me that they love wearing a mask. <laughs> I just, especially mm -hmm. right now, like I can barely breathe without the mask if I'm outside, like throw the mask on. It's <laughs> like, I'm just suffocating, but we're doing it because we have to do it and we care. And so that's, you know, that's really, that's a really cool thing that you have adjusted things um, for your clients. And that's super important. Um, Thank you. The last thing I wanted Thanks to for ask is, oh, what oh, did you say? Oh, I was just going to say, well, no, I, I appreciate you mentioning the review thing too. I mean, that's, that's what, you know, all of this stuff that I talked about and that you've brought up and, and the masks while we're working and the, the request app and, you know, all that stuff. Um, that's what that's for. We want those reviews to come back and we want people to say things yeah. like that. We want people to, you know, let people know that yeah. we do care that we spend hours. I mean, a typical, you know, this is something that I think is confusing in our industry is um, a five hour wedding for a good DJ or, or actually I, I should say a great DJ. Cause I do, <laughs> I always say there's good DJs and then there's great DJs, right? Um, knock on wood. I still hopefully am, and I'm a great DJ. Um, but, but I think part of that is that a five hour wedding we're spending anywhere from 12 to 15 hours of time working on your wedding, coordinating things, talking about the timeline, asking so many specific yeah. questions about the type of event you want, the type of music is, are things like the microphone covers important? So it's, um, you know, and that's what we see come back in those reviews. So we know it's important to our couples. So, Sorry, well, what was no, your last well, year? Well, it's, just, your, um, it's your plug, but I, I, you had said something that made me want to say, I've, I've worked in the business long enough in various ways to where I can tell you that a lot of my clients will have a mix of vendors where, and I come in for different reasons. So they may want a day of corner. They may not want the full blown package, which I urge anyone that has an event. If you're not going to get a coordinator, please, when you hire your, your, your MC, they, your DJ needs to have the outline. They need those specifics. And I don't think people know until they're in the thick of it how important it is. And I've seen so many events while I'm there. And I tell my brides, all of them, don't ever, ever, I hate saying skimp, but don't ever surpass that dollar amount. And think truly what you're getting because it's very important, whether it's a wedding or it's a quinceanera, whatever you're getting hired for, everything has a timeline. And you need to make sure that you're being specific with how you want things because it's in the moment. And when it passes, you're not going to be able to stop and like fix things. So it's just truly important to have someone who's organized, who knows not only how to play music, because you can probably vouch for this. Getting on there and mixing music is one thing, but really truly having that conversation to like cater to your event. And what I mean by that is, I, besides Courtney, I do designing. I do a lot of designing. So I'll go in and like design up plans for the way their room looks. Everything that they would want is going to go on paper and it's very detail oriented. And because I'm like that, I'll ask, you know, with your lighting during this part, do you want this music to come in? And they're just like, what? And I'm like, yeah, like, this can happen. You can be the Disney princess that you want to be, which by the way, I'm pretty sure you're a Disney fan. So you'll like appreciate that organization. <laughs> I may, I may or may not have had season passes for, I don't know, like seven years running yeah. now, but hey. It's just so important. So it's like, I always think like treat every event like a Disney event. And like, I always say like, you know, you can do things this way, but like have it out in your timeline, take the time to like find the person that's really going to like be there for you. And like, hold you accountable to say, did you think about a cake cutting song? Cause I'm pretty sure that wasn't on the back of your mind, you know, like things like that. Yeah. Well, even, even more so than that. And it's funny you mentioned the cake thing. Cause that's a great example as a, as a DJ and MC, what, what I'm doing when, right before cake cutting, I'm actually going and making sure that the knife is there and the napkin and the plate are there because we hear the stories and we've seen the videos of the DJ that's like, hey, everybody, it's time to do the cake cutting. Sarah's going to come on over here. Brad, come on over here, meet her. We're going to see how much these two love each other. They're going to cut their wedding cake. And they're standing there looking around and they're like, we don't have a knife. 
we we don't have a knife, so we need someone to, and everybody's watching that. We literally, that's one of those things that we got to check. I mean, and there's, there's lots of different spots there. A first dance, you know, we get everything ready for a first dance and the videographer's not in the room. That's on the DJ. In my opinion, that's on a great DJ. If, if you didn't notice that the videographer wasn't there and you didn't check with your videographer and your photographer to make sure they were ready to go, mm -hmm. that's on you. And that's a huge moment in a wedding. And, you know, you hit it right on the head. I mean, the, the first off, there was definitely a time in the time that I've done this where um, I liked coordinators and I, and I had no problem working with coordinators, but a lot of times we were like, Hey, we're on, we're a day of coordinator. If you don't have one, don't worry. We got you. Um, now, I, now probably more than ever, um, I really highly suggest that our couples have a coordinator, whether it be a day of a week of a month of, or a full service coordinator. Um, and there's, there's so many great ones in this market uh, that people just can't go wrong. And they're of all different budgets and all different, you know, types of designers and feels and looks. So it's, it's great, but it's so important because, you know, when we don't work with the coordinator, uh, as an example, um, we're putting together that day of timeline. We call it our entertainment timeline. And that timeline after we're done with it goes to the venue. It goes to the photographer. It goes to the videographer. And we're all making sure that we're all on the same page. And this is ahead of the event. And then that way, the day of the event, we're all on the same page. We know what order of events we are. If we're a few minutes behind or ahead based on, you know, just moving things at a comfort level, that's fine. But most importantly, we know what's next and we know what's going on. And, and we tell our couples all the time, I, I send that timeline out to our couples. I say, send it to your, your bridesmaids, your mother, whoever it is that's going to ask you 62 questions yeah. the day of the wedding of, when are we doing this? What time is that? Send them this timeline the day before with a really nice note that says, leave me yeah. the heck alone. If you have any questions, talk to my DJ, talk to my coordinator, talk to that person. Because we want, and I know you want this and you understand this, we want our couples to enjoy their day because it flies. Yeah. It's five hours or six hours. And all of a sudden, you know, we're doing, I've had the time of my life as a farewell dance. And in the bride and groom's head, they're going, <laughs> Oh my gosh, we just spent nine months planning for this day and it's over. And, and literally the last thing I want them to deal with is looking at a watch and going, what time is it? Are we supposed to be doing the toast yet? When is the first dance? You know, and, and that's so, so important. And it's, um, it's the, I, I personally think it's the biggest, most important part of what we do as a DJ reading the dance floor, adjusting to what's going on, super important. Having the right music and the right equipment, incredibly important. But if you do all of that, like you said, you can, you can nail 60% of the events or 60% of the event. Um, but that other 40% is crucial in people sticking around, having a good time, knowing what's going on, not being bored. Um, nothing, nothing worse than sitting at a wedding I've been a guest at two weddings that I haven't DJed at um, in the last, whatever, 15 years. And um, it was rough for me because I sat there and I had no idea what was going on. And people at my table knew I was a DJ and they're like, what are we doing? What's, what's going on? Why, why are we just listening to sleepy music? And I said, I don't know. Like, if that's me, I'm letting people know, hey, we, this is what's going on. Bride and groom are out taking some photos, grab a drink at the bar. They're going to come in in 15 minutes, you know, five minutes before I'm letting people know, yeah. use the restroom, grab a quick smoke yeah. if you need, whatever it is. Um, you know, let's be ready to celebrate the bride and groom when they make their entrance. Those are really yeah, important it is. things. You, totally. But, yeah, I, it's so funny you said that. I've been at weddings, oh, I've been to a lot of weddings, and I can tell you there's been a few where I've been like, I got it myself and went to try to help as the guest because I'm like, I cannot yep. sit here and watch this car going towards this wall. And I'm just like, I can't do it. I can't do it. So I just got him like, right. how can I help? Like, let me help you. <laughs> and it's not to step on anybody. It was that there was a legit need. And I just, sometimes it takes the day of where people don't realize, man, I really wish I could have done that. So again, like that's really like refreshing to hear it from the horse's mouth saying like, if you're not going to do an event coordinator, please know that when the time comes to hire, which in my bookings book, 
DJ is like number one, number two, like right in there. I'm like, get that nailed down Love because it. the good ones are going to go very fast. They're going to fill their dates up. And mm -hmm. it's so important to know that that's your person. That's your go-to. They're in charge of the whole night. It's going to flow because of them. And if they're great, that you're going to remember that night and you're going to feel relaxed. And like, just knowing that you're not going to have people coming into the room with the bride, like bugging them. I mean, that's really what part of my job is to like be the bad person to like kick people out. <laughs> so totally. If you're not yep. going to do that and you are on a budget and you're allocating your money differently, I, I just always say, please do your research and have a great consultation that's thorough enough. And you'll know, like, come with these questions, come with this and know that like, that you'll know if this person knows their stuff or not. You know, it's pretty hard to, it's pretty hard to BS people in this business. Unfortunately, there's definitely vendors out there that, um, you know, they'll, they'll, they win an award or, you know, I mean, uh, nothing against anybody that's won the KCRA A list, but the A list is, is a good example of an award that has nothing. You don't ever have to see the person DJ. You can literally send a mass email out to 2000 people at your church and row people up and say, hey, make sure you vote for me. And you could be the number one wedding photographer in town. And you could have literally never shot a wedding. And no one would know that. And then they're going to get into, like you said, they'll get into a consultation. Um, and they're going to tell people like, hey, we, we won number one on this or number one on that. Um, that stuff. So, I mean, it's funny that you mentioned the five star thing. I didn't mention that. I always I forget to mention that all the time. We won a national DJ of the year award um, all the way back in 1999, if that, how old I am <laughs> um, or getting, um, but, but I was, I won the national DJ of the year award. And I forget to mention that all the time because I don't really need to mention that, frankly, if I'm talking to my couples about what's important to them and they're going to know, like this right. guy knows his stuff. He's about me. He's about what we're going to do. And, and that's, uh, you know, that's huge in our industry. And, um, you know, good teams and good coordinators that are working with people that they refer and that they've, you know, talked to us about um, or talked to their clients about, you know, we're text messaging each other at 10, 30, 11 o'clock at right. night, sometimes talking about a wedding, like, Hey, you know, what's, what's going on? Did we decide whether or not we're going to do the first dance right when we come in or, you know, and, and we're working on that timeline sometimes at 1130 at night. That's what good coordinators and good vendors teams do. And, um, you know, like, like you said, you know, you sometimes, sometimes I got to help out. Sometimes I got to jump in. I've definitely brought a drink to a bride and groom. I've definitely jumped into the kitchen and grabbed a knife, literally like <laughs> asked the server, like, where are the knives? They're like, right there. And I'm like, here, all right, thanks. And they're like, is that for that? And I'm like, yep, you guys forgot it. I'm going to take care of it. Got Don't it. worry. But that's, that's what, that's what we got to do. And like you said, um, sometimes you don't, you don't want that car to run away and hit the wall. You got to jump in and help yeah, wherever because, you can. Like, it's gonna, so. part of it's going to fall on you and you're like, this is not who I am. This is not what I'm about. And I'm not about to let this happen. So I'm going into the kitchen. I'm getting the knife, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> and it's, and it's a crazy time right now. Those things, all that stuff that we've talked about, I think is more important than ever because unfortunately there's a lot of people that are out of work. Um, including me <laughs> anyways, but uh, not totally out of work, but kind of, um, but what's happening is there's a lot of people that are now getting into random side jobs and side businesses. So I think we're going to see it over the next couple of years. We're going to have a lot of, a lot of DJs and a lot of photographers and a lot of wedding planners and people that are just like, Hey, I think I can do this. And they're going to jump into the business and, you know, there's going to be some great people that come out of that for sure. Um, there's going to be a lot of brides and grooms that are, you know, so strictly worried about budget or so worried about, you know, different other things that factor into it, um, that they may not make great decisions in their vendors. So yeah, it's important to, to shop around and talk to people and, and let, and be honest with your vendors. You know, if you're, if you're sitting down with a DJ, that's $2,500 for a, a lighting photo booth and DJ package, and you're strict on your budget at $2,200, tell your DJ that see what your DJ can do to work right. with you. You know, if you, if you have a $4,000, you know, photographer that you love and you have $2,800 for photography, talk to that mm -hmm. photographer, find out what they might be able mm -hmm. to do to work their package into a $2,500 or $2,800 package, whatever it may be. That yeah, stuff's important. Yeah, totally. So. Well, okay. hello. <laughs> my little, my little two-year-old just came home. You want to come say hi? 
Come say hi real quick. Hi. Say hi. Say hi, everybody. Hi. Tell them what your name is. Hi. Say it big. Amanda. <laughs> oh, Lila. Lila. Hi, Lila. Say I'm Lila, and I like playing with microphones, huh? <laughs> we're we're gonna start training her yeah, in about a year. Yeah, she's part of the package, right? <laughs> she's an add-on. <laughs> yep. You want to go back down to mommy? No. Yeah, why don't you head down? There. I'm gonna finish Lila. up this talk. It's okay. Um, <laughs> Brian, what is the best way that the, that the community can support you right now? Um, and I'm gonna plug in your handles after, and I upload the video, so I'll put oh, in all of your social media handles. But what is like a way besides? booking you for an event, like what is a great way that the community can support you? Yeah, shoot, that's a, the, whew, where do I get started on that? I mean, first and foremost, you know, if you have friends or family or someone that's having any type of event, um, let them know about us. Um, you know, we're, we're definitely an upper end company. We're very experienced and very well preferred in town. So I think a lot of times people are, yeah, I have a lot of friends that are like, hey, someone I know is getting married and I told them about you, but I told them you were expensive, so they probably won't call you. Uh, that, you know, we, right. we hate that because first off, what's right. expensive? Do they know what they're getting for what we're charging? Do they, do they know what our price? Do you know what our prices are? You know, oh, they're getting married on a Friday night. Hey, do you know we have a discount right. on Friday night? You know, so, um, you know, please, we, we love referrals and we love people that tell others about us and um, just let people know that, uh, you know, we're out there working hard and, and doing everything we can to support events. Um, you know, I just about 10 minutes before I got on here, I got a text message from my daughter's elementary school. And for the fourth or the third time, they have rescheduled their drive through parade, which was kind of their chance to see their teachers in person, wave at them. I was going to come out. I volunteered my time to come out and, and DJ for three hours. Um, I won't lie. We don't do a ton of volunteer stuff. Um it just it just we get hit from everybody to do it. We try to help out as much as we can. Um, now we have more time, of course, than we ever have. Um, but like I was doing that because my daughter was going to be there. And I have an eight year old and a two year old daughter and family is incredibly mm -hmm. important to me. Um, probably been the biggest cool part of all of this is I've had weekends off during the summer this year, which I don't have. I have literally not had weekends off from basically May or April to October for I don't know how many years until this year. So we got to do that. But yeah, tell people about us, let people know. Um, I mean, everything. I've had a couple of karaoke parties lately, which we don't charge a whole lot for. Um, they've A couple of them have been friends of mine. So um, literally we go over and set up a karaoke computer and library and some speakers at a house party. And, and in most cases, we leave it and they, they take care of it pretty much is easy to run, you know, and then we pick it up the next day or whatever we do. Um, so, you know, those things help, but yeah, you know, tell, we love good word. Um, I don't know. I mean, hopefully by next year we'll be doing city of Folsom events. We do all the city of Folsom events run with nature, the wacky dash, um, you know, the bark in the parks we've done all this, you know, the extravaganza, the big, uh, egg hunt out at, at Limby park. Um, so, you know, at those events, come up and say hi to us, tell, you know, introduce somebody to us that may have a business that we can help out with for a holiday party or for a grand opening or whatever it may be. It just, I think, you know, thinking outside the box and if you have any audio, visual, lighting, DJ, music needs, we're here to help and you. So um, can someone do, if they know as a present, can someone gift a type of gift card to like for your service to like maybe their granddaughter or their niece or someone that they know is that a thing can they book you in advance and do something like that why not yeah. <laughs> let's do it you know honest honestly i you know we've had people we've definitely had like a grandparent call us and say hey you're djing so-and-so's wedding and we wanted to pay a thousand dollars of their, you know, wedding DJ as a present for them. We've had stuff like that. Um, but, you know, to be completely honest, we've never really made gift certificates and, you know, had people do that. But yeah, we're, we're open for anything. I always tell people one of the best parts of, um, I worked for another company for, for several years before I started my own thing. Um, and the best part of working for myself is, is I'm the boss. I can make that decision. I can, if, if that's what we want to do, let's do it.
If we want to try something fun, let's try it. Um, if we want to take a risk, we're going to take that risk. If we have a couple that wants us to do something different, I don't have to answer to anybody. So yeah, we'll try let's it. Let's do, do it. it. You heard it here. <laughs> um, so everyone support Brian Greenwald and um, his company, Music and More Entertainment. Music, music and More yes, Entertainment. Please. Yeah. Uh, DJ lighting, photo booth. I don't know. Whatever else. Monogramming, do. uh, day of coordinator. In, uh, <laughs> put me in a, put me in a, I, I mascot it. I actually, I actually did a game as sourdough Sam for the 49ers years ago. I, you put me in a suit and I don't know if I'll stand at the corner and wave the sign very well, but, uh, but we can okay. have some fun. I mean, we've, we've kind of done it all. Yeah, we've so. and make it work. Thank you so much for taking time out. You're a family man. So, and I family is number one to me as well. So I really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you, um, Lila for making an appearance. Um, we'll be booking you as an <laughs> add on for our next event. <laughs> right. Um, she'll be, uh, she'll be our, our hula she's dancer. Adorable. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Awesome. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, let's, let's battle through this, get through this whole COVID thing. And, and, and honestly, I probably goes without saying, I should have mentioned this um, man, just uh, prayers and thoughts for all these people affected by these fires. And um, a very good friend of mine is a wedding photographer has been texting me off and on all day. And we've been talking about evacuations for her family and friends up north and, and Oroville and one of my favorite places on earth, Loon Lake, a big fire, broke out yesterday about four miles from there. And, um, you know, the director, the, the guy that runs the campsite's a friend of mine and he packed up and left and they're done for the year and it's rough out there. So support people. I think it's really important support people in our community, support businesses in our community. Um, friends of Folsom in town that I'm a big part of, you know, is always doing all kinds of stuff, um, to help out with these, these emergencies and disasters and, Man, you know, think about everyone out there because it's a rough time right now and we need lots of yeah, positive do. vibes. Yeah, we do. We definitely do. The We're going to get through it and I just, I'm praying for the people that have been affected and just it's support each other, love each other and we'll get through it together. Thanks. I love it. I appreciate well it so much. Have a great evening and um, thanks. I'll... Thanks for having me on and anytime you want to want to chat, I, uh, I mean, I work on I work on a microphone for most of my life, so I'm more than happy to chat and talk about ideas and I all kinds to, of things. I used to be a singer. I still kind of dabbled, so I love the mic. <laughs> you know that too, yep. That, well, you know, it was funny when all this happened. The first thing I did is I said, how can I help people in our industry? And I started, I literally watched webinar after webinar after webinar all day long on PPP, on loans, on business stuff. And, and then I went back and did Zooms with people in our industry and just tried to help people and answer yeah. questions and, you know, help get us through this. So it's, you know, it's, it's natural, yeah. I guess. So Thank thanks you. again. Have a good evening. All right. All right. Bye. You too. Bye. <laughs>